Are you all sitting comfortably? Good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Council. Now, I'll start with some uh, general domestic arrangements um, due to regulations surrounding the voting. Only those members physically present are able to vote. However, if members dialing in on Teams would like to contribute to the debates, please use the raised hand function on your iPad. Good evening, people at home. If you use one of the communal microphones, please use the cleaning materials provided after you've used it. Mobile devices, please ensure that all electronic equipment is either on silent mode or switched off to minimise interruption. The meeting is being live screened so during the open session for members of the public to watch. So please behave yourselves, everybody. If you would like to speak, please, please press your microphone to let me know and I will invite you to speak when it will turn red. Right, item one. Apologies for absence. Are there any apologies? Thank you, Mayor. Apologies received from Councillors Rainsbury, Shaw and Wolderidge. Thank you. OK, thank you. Are there any more? Yes, Councillor. Apologies from Councillor John Hesketh. Fortunately, he can't make it tonight. Okay. Councillor. Any more? No. Nope. Right. OK. Declarations of interest. Members are reminded of their responsibility to declare any pecuniary interest in respect of matters contained in this agenda. Are there any declarations of interest? No. Nope. Good. Right. right. Minutes of the last meeting. This I, I, excuse me. <clears throat> this item is for decision. Can I please ask the leader of the council, Councillor Paul For Foster, to propose that the minutes be accepted and approved? I'm very happy to propose. Thank you. Is that seconded? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yes. Of course you can. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I've already uh, proffered an apology to the Leader of the Council. At the last meeting, I mentioned uh, a, an email that I believed had been sent to all councillors concerning uh, the commencement of PERDA. Um, that was my error. It wasn't an email that had been sent at this council. Uh, unfortunately, it had been sent at uh, our neighbouring council at Chorley. I had seen the email. Unfortunately, it didn't apply here. So I do apologise to all members because um, it was a statement that I'd made. And again, I'd like to repeat my apology to the leader of the council uh, that I've already made personally uh, on that point. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chris. Are you happy with that, Councillor Foster? Thank you. Good. Um, are there any questions on points of accuracy from anybody? I think I'm no, Councillor Phil Smith. Thank you, Mayor. It, it, it's not a point of accuracy, but um, I, I did ask a question at the last council meeting with regard to the, the heat pumps in the leisure facilities, um, which it says here a response will be provided uh, following the meeting. As far as I know, I haven't had that response, but um, I'm sure Councillor Sivriton will pick that up now and, uh, and send one at some stage. Thank you. Councillor? Well, I must confess, I mean, I thought I answered that question at council. Um, I said that uh, the reason that we're, de we're invested in the decarbonisation work is to get rid of the use of, of, of gas. So um, if, he wants a, if he wants a response in writing, I, I will do that. But that will be the contents of uh, any response. Right. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. Are you happy with that, Councillor Smith? Uh, not, not really, Mayor, but I will speak to Councillor Smith after the meeting. Thank right. you. Thank you. Right, any more questions? <laughs> uh, that sounded like a threat. Uh, anybody else, any, any other comments about the minutes or questions? No, so we'll take it to the vote, please. Monitoring officer, are we ready? Everybody, can, yeah, it's just to vote, vote everybody. Item four on the agenda, returning officer's report. Uh, this is for noting Gary Hall is returning officer to present his report. Can I ask the 
Yeah, go on. Sorry, I was reading the next bit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I have the pleasure of uh, presenting the results of the recent by-election at the Earnshaw Bridge Ward. Uh, and uh, welcome to uh, Councillor Jackson, uh, who was elected on that night. So, thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Lou. Welcome. You, you are the ward councillor for my ward where I live, so just be, you know, just be warned. I've got a, I've got a list, you know, for you to sort out. So you're okay. Right. And my son's here and he lives in the ward as well. So, you know, we can be trouble. And what are you going to do about my dustbins? Um, can I please ask the leader of the council, Paul Foster, to propose a recommendation? Um, thanks, Mayor. Welcome, councillor Lou Jackson, to the authority. Really, really pleased, as you know, Lou, to have you as part of the team. And, you know, clearly I'm going to remind council and members of the public that the, the Labour group saw an 11% increase in its share of the vote at Earnshaw Bridge, despite some rather disingenuous campaign material that was shared by the Conservative group that's currently being reviewed. Um, and despite Mr Johnson coming and visiting, because that did us the world of good. And let's hope he stays in power for another 11 months. 11% um, increase in our share of the vote, Lou, as we discussed after we had a beer after your election, sees a very, very, very different South River Borough Council in 10 and a half, sorry, 11 and a half months time. And I genuinely cannot wait. Welcome, Lou, and well done. Thank you. Seconder. That's a concert. <laughs> Is there a seconder for this? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. I'm happy to I'm happy to sec uh, to second that and uh, offer my congratulations to Lou, who I know will be uh, a tremendous attribute not just to the Labour Group but to uh, the Council in general. So many congratulations and uh, look forward to working with her. Now, there are are there any questions from members of the Council, Councillor Walton? I was going to re respond. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's okay. Thank you. So congratulations and welcome, Councillor Jackson, to um, South River Borough Council. And we look forward to working with you in the future. So welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anybody else want to say anything? Nope. No, right. <laughs> right, that was just for noting. So thank you, everybody, for your contributions. And now I'm on item five. And this is a proposal for the election of the mayor for 2022 to 2023. And this is an item for decision. So can I please ask Councillor Harry Hancock to speak? Thank you, Mayor. It gives me great pleasure to propose Councillor David Harris as our new mayor for the municipal year 2022-23. I have known David since he was first elected as my ward councillor in 1995 and then latterly as my fellow councillor in Broadoak and now as my colleague on the council for the ward of Howick and Priory. I do recall back in 1995 that he was about six foot two tall but he has been pounding the streets that long he is now only five foot eight. David's political career actually goes back as far as 1966, when he stood as a liberal in his junior school mock election, only to come second to a conservative whose promises centred around giving away free sweets to her friends. <laughs> Some things in life never change. <laughs> David has now served the people of Penwitham continuously as a town councillor for 27 years, and during that time, 21 years as a South Ribble Borough Councillor. He has served on all of the major committees, including being a member of two cabinets and spending four years as deputy leader of the council. He is particularly proud of having had the portfolio for green issues that introduce recycling to the borough even going out to Shelswick for a tour of their waste facilities. For the last three years, he has been the chair of scrutiny, 
a role which I think we can all agree he has carried out in a fair and even-handed manner, without any favour or fear of holding the administration to account. He also had the very difficult role of chairing the investigation and disciplinary panel which charted unprecedented waters, all of which has given an indication of what we can expect in carrying out the role of mayor. Anybody who attempts to cross him, however, should be very wary of doing so. After graduating with a degree in fine art, which not many people are aware of, David spent 30 years working for Northern Rock, and in 2007, he lost his seat in that May's election by three votes. Within months, he had crashed the economy, saying, that'll teach him. <laughs> <laughs> he also originates from Manchester and says that if you cut him in half, the word Manchester will be running through him, closely followed by the word United. His two sons are here this evening, Matt and Alex, and yes, they are named after Matt Busby and Alec Ferguson. He has been going to Old Trafford since being a young boy back in the 60s, when I used to be on mounted duty, patrolling the crowds and the queues at the turnstiles. I'm pretty sure that I probably had to give him a clip round the ear for his cheek and keep him in line. As I have already said, some things in life don't change. Tracy has been told that the first thing she needs to obtain is a fixture list. But David is reconciled to missing quite a lot of the games whilst being an ambassador for the borough, which he says, given the way that they've been playing, might not be a bad thing. Quite uniquely as well, we are about to have a mod and rocker combination as our mayor and mayoress. David is not only seen in his large collection of mod suits, but also has a collection of scooters. Meanwhile, Ange, similarly, has a collection of motorcycles, including a 1,000cc superbike. Mm -hmm. Wow. If endurance is necessary to be the mayor, then David is well-trained, having ridden a Vespa PX200 to France for a scooter rally, and then coming back in a single journey, which took 14 hours. Apparently, he was walking like John Wayne for a week afterwards. Last summer, David and Angie rode 1,400 miles around the coast of Scotland and back nine days to do the North Coast 500, including going on to the Orkneys. A couple of months later, he rode down to the Isle of Wight scooter rally, and not many people can claim to have been on islands at both ends of Great Britain within a couple of months. David's other passion is music and he has a vast collection of vinyl and CDs covering an electric taste. He likes nothing better than watching live music and attending music festivals. His first was the Bickershaw Festival in 1972, where apparently the Grateful Dead played for five hours, and he has experienced those I was there moments, having been at the Rock Against Racism rally in 1978, headlined by The Clash, and was at Wembley for Live Aid. <coughs> How appropriate, then, that this year is the first Leyland Music Festival, and I informed that Heaven 17 are performing at his request, so we could be in for some very entertaining fundraising events. Although so far he is struggling to get Rage Against the Machine, Queens of the Stone Age, or Ferocious Dog to agree to come. Good luck. In closing, David has consistently been a strong advocate for a fair and equitable system of appointing the mayor, which is a reflection of his core sense of ethics and values. That he is now the longest serving member of the council who has not held the office of mayor after years of dedicated service to his community, only serves to show that he is the most deserving of this honour. 
It therefore gives me great pleasure to commend to you, Councillor David Harris, as your Mayor for the coming year, and I move the proposal. Thank you. So is that seconded, I believe, Councillor Below? You don't have to stand up if you don't want to, Rainey. Thank you, that's very kind of you. <laughs> uh, can I say, Mr Mayor, Lady Mayoress, fellow councillors, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to be able to second my fellow Howick and Priory councillor, David Howard, to be the Mayor of South Ribble. I have known David for many years, during which time we have served together both on Penwitham Town Council and now on the borough. He has a wealth of experience not only in the running of the council, but as a real person that resides, that residents warm to, and is well known for all of the hard work that he does and the time he puts in for his local residents, how we can priory. Qualities that may well be called upon as he chairs the meeting of the council over the coming year. He is a diligent in the role of mayor, which I'm sure he will be, as he is in the dressing of the concerns of residents and following up the calls he receives. Then the borough will be well served. Can I likewise wish both David and Angie an enjoyable, successful and rewarding year. And I have great pleasure in seconding David Howard as the Mayor of South Ribble for the, mo the coming municipal year of 2022 to 23. Well done. Thank you, Councillor Blow. And now can I invite any comments? Well, I think that's a, is that a loaded question, Mayor? Thanks. For we, um, we are really, really pleased to see uh, Councillor David Howarth becoming the Mayor of this Council. I've um, worked very closely with David as the leader of the Liberal Democrats group over the last three years, obviously. And David's number one priority always is doing the best for the people of this borough and I genuinely couldn't be pleased to see a nicer person take up that role so thank you for doing it David and good luck. Thank you Councillor Foster. Councillor Walton. Thank you Mayor. Um, congratulations Councillor Howard. I have enjoyed working with you as Chair of Scrutiny over the past few years and I congratulate you and Angie, and I look forward to working with you and supporting you in, as Mayor of South River Borough Council for the municipal year 2023-24. Well done. Thank you, Councillor. Now, are there any other members that would like to say anything? Now's your time to speak. Yay or nay? Right, the yeas have it then. Okay, we now, and that's the end of the debate. So we now hand over to the monitoring officer for the vote. But I presume we're just going to press our buttons just like we normally do. So would you like to press your buttons, please? Right, uh, that looks as though uh, we're all in favour of that. <laughs> so, that's happened as well, isn't it? So, thank you very much, everybody. <clears throat> so, the recommendation is we've formally elected David Howarth as Mayor of the Borough for 22 23. Congratulations, David. Congratulations. Right.
Item six, proposal for the election of the deputy mayor. Is that right? I'm oh, sorry, are you stopping me? I thought David was going to speak. Are you going to speak, David? No. No, not at this moment. I'm going to leave it to the last Yeah, okay. yeah. It's all right. Just having a little meeting here about what's going on. It does help if we know, doesn't it? That's what it says on my paper. Is it what it says on your paper? <gasps> I haven't got anything that says that. It's all right. We'll no. do it later. It's fine. No, we haven't got that. So I'm on Deputy Mayor. Um, it's flummoxing me tonight, and I usually know what I'm doing. Item six, proposal for the election of De Deputy Mayor for 22-23. Again, this is a decision for us all. Can I ask the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster, to speak? Thanks, Mayor. As all members will be aware, today is predominantly about the appointments of the, the mayor and the mayoress. Um, however, protocol, we do also have to appoint the deputy mayor. I won't be saying much mayor other than proposing councillor Chris Lomax from Waltonydale as the deputy mayor. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Is that seconded? Thank you, councillor Trafford. Have you nothing else to say, Matt? No, just that. Thank you. Councillor Walton. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, at the Council meeting in January 2022, the Conservative Group proposed an amendment to the recommendations brought forward concerning the proposal for Deputy Mayor-elect of this borough and our clear reasons for pro proposing such an amendment. Unfortunately, the, re the amendment was rejected by Council and tonight is not the time to revisit this issue and humiliate again the member of the Conservative Group we proposed in January. And as a consequence of this, the Conservative group will not be supporting the proposal to elect the Deputy Mayor of this borough, Councillor Chris Lomax, for the municipal year 2022-23. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, is there, are there any more members who would like to say anything? No. OK, thank you. Uh, that, that's at the end of the debate, so we now need to vote on this. Uh, so please use your buttons. Can I just clarify, Councillor Walton, are you abstaining or are you voting? Because yes. you, you implied you're abstaining. Are you voting against? OK, thank you. It's carried. Thank you. Congratulations, Chris. That it says that that to with uh, the new deputy mayor um, could you know thank people for his appointment. It's entirely up to you whether you want to say anything or not, Chris. Council or Max, sorry. <laughs> I don't know about the rules of debate or anything. Uh, I'd just like to thank um, Councillor Paul Foster and Matt Trafford for putting me through. I'll endeavour to perform my duties that are entrusted to me at the best of my ability and pledge to support David, the new mayor and his mayoress during his year in office. And I really, really am looking forward to working with them both. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lomax. And now, this is where, this is the last bit I do as mayor. So bye bye, everybody. I'm going home now. Um, no, there will be a short adjournment whilst the mayoral party exchange robes. I take my red dressing gown off and I give it to David. And he can have the dangly thing and everything. And this is where I can invite members of his family, my family, to come and join us so that you can see what goes on and have some photographs taken. OK, my loves? Oh, that's not very professional, is it? So my love. The I'm the mayor. I can do what I want. Right. So we have our frocks off now.
Say that over to you. Yeah, okay. and the deputy mayor to make their declarations uh, and sign the uh, acceptance of office. Thank you. I, David Howarth, having been elected to the office of Mayor of South Ribble Buller Council, declare that I take the office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Is it on? Yeah. I, Chris Lomax, having been elected to the office of Deputy Mayor of South Ribble Borough Council, declare that I take the office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Sorry. I'm being heckled already and that's from my own side. I just say if, uh, if I do perform quite well tonight, I am passing this round at the end of the meeting, so <laughs> feel free to put any loose change in it. Um, retiring Mayor, fellow councillors, family and friends, I'm deeply honoured, privileged and proud to have been elected as Mayor of South Ribble. And can I thank my proposer and seconder, um, for their support and their very kind words and the members of the council for their endorsement. I'd also like to express my thanks and appreciation for the support I've received from my family and friends who've travelled from near and far to be here. In fact, two of them have come from the other side of Middle Earth, but that's a, that's a private joke amongst my family. Um, may I give you my assurance that both myself and my mayoress, Councillor Angela Turner, who incidentally is also the Mayor of the Township of Penwitham, will do our utmost to serve our community, to be ambassadors for our borough and to have the interests of our residents at heart in everything we do. I've now lived in the borough for over 31 years and hope that I qualify as one of its adopted sons. In all that time, nothing has given me as much pride and pleasure as being a local councillor over the last 27 years here in South Ribble on all three tiers of local government. I was going to say that there are four other members on the council this evening. Unfortunately, <laughs> Councillor Hesketh and Councillor Wooldridge aren't here, but they were um, at my first council meeting 27 years ago, along with Councillor Margaret Smith and Councillor Barry Yates. Um, the fact that we were here when I was first elected 27 years ago, I think bears out the high regard in which we all hold this council and its achievements for our community. Whilst we're looking forward to meeting the people of South Ribble and accepting the many invitations, the diverse and exciting events that showcase the talent we have in the borough and the commitment of those who freely give their time and effort to enable them to take place, we're also looking forward to being part of the celebratory events in what is a very special year. Not only do I have the privilege of being Mayor, but also the Platinum Jubilee Mayor. Within my lifetime, there have been 14 Prime Ministers Winston Churchill actually stood down two weeks after I was born. 13 presidents of the United States of America, 11 managers of Manchester United, eight secretary generals of the United Nations, seven popes, seven archbishops of Canterbury, 
but only one monarch. And no matter what one might think of the institutions of the monarchy and the lords, I defy anyone to contend that Her Majesty the Queen has not served this country with diligence, dedication, and above all, a commitment to duty, the like of which we may never see again. May she and all of those celebrating thoroughly enjoy the occasion. Which now brings me to my chosen charities. Anyone who, like myself, who has had the misfortune to experience the need for end-of-life palliative care could not be in better and more caring hands than the staff of St Catherine's Hospice. We often talk of the South Ribble family, and may I pay tribute to the years of service from Cliff Hughes. I'm looking around as to where he is. Cliff. Many members have mentioned Tommy Hansen, who now has uh, Tom Hansen House named after him. And it was his daughter who cared for my, my late wife at St Catherine's some 21 years ago. My second charity is Mind. During lockdown, many of us either experienced mental health issues ourselves or came across somebody who did. Mental health for years has been seen as a lower priority than physical well-being. And now more than ever, we need the services of a charity like Mind. My third charity is the National Autistic Society. The autistic spectrum is wide and varied and no two children are the same. When I was at school, you were simply the disruptive child and diagnosis, targeted assistance and understanding just didn't exist. <coughs> Through the work of the National Autistic Society, we have come to learn so much more about those who are wired a bit differently and have much more understanding of behaviour patterns and the needs of those with autism. Now I would like to return, now I would like to, not return, now I would like to turn to our retiring Mayor, Jane Bell and our Mayoress Emma, who has so ably supported her. Jane is nothing if not a colourful character, <coughs> with her endearing exuberance. A term of office has not been an easy one. Initially being hampered by COVID restrictions, even down to having an online mayoral banquet, where we all dressed up at home, fed ourselves and joined in via Zoom. But a natural creativity has found the ways and means of reaching as many groups and organisations as possible, as shown by the moving performances of the groups who kept us enthralled at her spring banquet. Jane has been described as, and I will not say by who, somebody over there, everyone's favourite auntie. How apt that was as she devoted her time to reading stories on social media, undertaking school visits for book week, supporting dementia friends, attending, uh, attending talking tables, even playing ping pong, promoting nest boxes, planting things, and far better than I will be, and even eating cake, lots of cake. Jane has been such a diligent mayor that I've rarely had to stand in for her. The exceptions being the Lost Dock Hall Remembrance Parade and setting fire to Leyland. Oh, sorry, that's say setting a fire in Leyland uh, on bonfire night. Jane, I hope you have enjoyed what turned out to be your mayoral 18 months. And on behalf of the council, may I thank both you and Emma for all of the time and energy that you've devoted to the role. Can I now call on Councillor Paul Foster? Um, thanks, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, I can't really follow that, Jane, can I now? Other than, to, other than to welcome Jane, Councillor Jane Bell, back into the Labour group now. And I've never been threatened with being kicked out of a council meeting before. And I'm sure that's one of your last things that you did at the last council meeting, which we may have a chat about tomorrow. Um, no, in all seriousness, Jane's been an absolutely wonderful mayor for the borough of South Ribble, our COVID mayor as we refer to you as Jane, and duly supported by Emma, and we've been lovely seeing you both around the borough. It couldn't have been more challenging, could it, that lockdown? It was awful with COVID. At any time I used to dial into Jane, or used to meet up through the, you always tried your best with that big smile and laugh to keep people's energy going. And I think it's 70,000 hits, were you saying the other day, that we've had on the, the Mayor's Facebook from the stories that, that Jane has shared with, um, with the local community, particularly the kids. The kids loved it and they loved you. And by the way, um, Mayor, we refer to her as the, she's the, the grandma of the group, not the auntie, but we'll talk about that later. Also, you know, and I know Jane has done a wonderful amount of work for the charities 
And I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this, but some of the charities are really close to Jane's heart, hence why we all supported her as much as we could, because Jane's daughter, Sarah, is severely ill. And Jane has had to deal with that as well as being the first citizen of this borough. And we're immensely, immensely proud of you, Jane. And I will enjoy a drink with you later on. And welcome back, Jane. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. So, Councillor Jane Bell, supported by her lovely Mayor Emma, has worked hard and with great enthusiasm during the summer exceptional times for everyone over the past 18 months. Thank you, Jane, for all your hard work as Ambassador in carrying out the honour of being Mayor of the Borough of South Rubble. There was always a humour and a chat for everyone you met, in all locations and in all weather. We hope you enjoyed your special time and we'll look back on all the wonderful memories you have made and the amazing people you have met in carrying out all your <coughs> duties. And lastly, for keeping the rest of us councillors in line at the council meetings. So well done, Jane. Thank you. Uh, it is you now, Jane. You said that you could now go home. But you can't because I'm going to invite you uh, to speak about your mayoral year. Well, I've written a speech, so I better do it, haven't I? Right. I'll, I'll stand up. Oh, I'll stand up. Right. My family said, when can we go home? I said, not until I've done my speech. Right. Oh, I can't see. Right. So, oh, this hell, not her again, go. Yeah. Forgive me before I start, if I cry, you know. But <clears throat> I've practised this without crying. Well, I've started off here saying, well, here we all are gathered together. Well, thank you for that. And it's been a very strange time to be mayor, but a very strange time for everyone. My, my morality has been in two halves, virtual and almost normal. And so my thanks are in two halves. Thank you to those of you who supported the work, the work I did virtually. Sadly, very few councillors liked or commented, but we reach, which has already been mentioned, well over 70,000 people, which is more than half of the residents of South Ribble. So I want a merit mark and a badge for that. But I didn't do it alone. Team Mayor was formed. Sarah Matheson from IT, Tim Underwood from Communications and Tracy O'Reilly, who did all the admin stuff. And now this is the bit where they get a prezzy. So where's the prezzies and where are the bodies? So Sarah Matheson, where are you? She was here. Where's she gone? Sarah Matheson, hither. Tim Underwood, hither. Right, come on, leg it round here, Chuck. And Tracy O'Reilly. And she's there. So there you go, little prezzy, team there. She was brilliant, this girl. No, no, you're not hiding. Stop it, stop it. This is the lady who recorded, we, we were online, and I was saying, is this scarf all right? Have I done that all right? She recorded all the stories, all the monologues, all sorts of stuff, didn't you, Chuck? And we spent hours and hours and hours doing that. So that was brilliant. Now, where's Tim Underwood? Right, now, Tim Underwood communications he made sure it all went was posted at the right time at the right place so that the children who had stories they knew when it was going to go out so tim and again also interviewed me and emma a lot so tim come and get a prezi and the other member of team there is tracy now tracy did all the faffing in the background she contacted the kids, she did the certificates, she got the books printed, she made sure these two knew what they were doing and what I was doing. Brilliant stuff. So, Tracy, part of Team Mayor. Well done, Tracy. I'm going to start right piece of paper now. Right, and then things began to change in sort of August time and things got a little bit more normal. So, the Mayoress and I, 
went to lots of fun things in fields. Be warned, you'll be in a field a lot in the summer. Whether you make it fun or not, it's entirely up to you. We went to quiz it, quizzes and banquets, and we met some lovely and interesting people. And this is where I say thank you to Emma, but I've not got your pressy. Right. So. Oh, yes, you're going on holiday tomorrow. Yeah, get some new. Oh, I think I'll also talk to someone. Right. And now there's some more thank yous. Right. Now, to my friend and fellow councillor uh, in crime in Seven Stars, Mal Donoghue, he has taken on most of the work in that ward whilst I've been there and has supported me by attending all the, my fundraising events. So thank you, Mal, and I owe you a curry. <laughs> now then. It's not often I've had a man in my life who's looked after me, but Dave Poulter, who drives the car, has been absolutely wonderful. Now, you're aware I've got sticks. Him and me are experts with sticks now, so he is, has looked after me beyond the call of duty. Um, so, where are you, Dave? Here's a small talk. Where are you, David? I see, he'll have gone all. It's on all. it would be sat in the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, practice it route to pen with them, yeah. So I'll just carry on then, and then when he comes, I'll give him his pressy. Right. And then the other person to thank, because like I said, it was in two halves, the virtual and the nearly real, is Tracy yet again, because she carried on all the way through the 18 months. So this is the second bit of her thing. So like, and I don't think any of you have any idea how much work she does behind the scenes. Well, I know, and and I value her work and support. And so she's got another Prezi. She's got another, but we couldn't wrap it up because I don't know how to wrap up umbrellas. Right? It was an umbrella. I had no idea. I thought, oh, she, she'll know it's an umbrella if it's wrapped up. So, so there. And does Dave, have we found him yet? Oh, well, we'll wait for him in a bit. He'll have to have it afterwards. Right. Now, this is a sort of serious little bit now. What is my legacy? Well, I'm not dead yet. That's probably good. I think the Peace Garden, which sprang to life as a result of a conversation between myself and Jenny Mullin, and has been brought to life by a whole raft of officers and volunteers. And I think you'll all um, appreciate what a lovely space that is now. So instead of a gift for the Mayor's Parlour, I'm going to be donating a tree for the garden. So I think that's appropriate, don't you? Right. And another thing I think is a bit of a legacy is my rekindling of our contact with our twin town in Germany. And after some considerable time, you know, I, I've been on the council sort of 11 years and I don't remember us doing anything with our twin town. So I think it's, so that's a nice legacy. And I know that our new Mary's mayors will thoroughly enjoy their visit at the end of June. But I think the real legacy will be what people remember, you know. And so I'm nearly at the end. It's um, been hard work. It's been fun. It's been interesting. And at times it's been very lonely. So thank you, David, for your sterling work as a deputy and all the best for your, your coming year. And I hope you have a lovely time and thoroughly enjoy everything that you do. But without my family, I couldn't have done any of it. Thanks, kids. So God bless you, everybody. Right, thank you, Jane. Um, and at this point, we're going to have a short adjournment because we now have to get on with the business part of the meeting. Um, anybody who wishes to stay, you're more than welcome. Anybody who wishes to have a wander off outside while we actually get through the boring bit, uh, feel free to do so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you, my darling. <laughs> What's <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Right, I think those that are going have gone. Um, those suckers for punishment, which seem to be my group from Penworth and sitting over on the other side, um, have decided to stay. So the next item on the agenda is the appointment of Deputy Leader and members of the Cabinet. And if I could ask the Leader to move the recommend uh, the nominations. Thanks, uh, Mayor. Be be just before I do, if you, you don't doze me slightly, I think it's only right and proper that I publicly thank the Liberal Democrat yourself and your colleagues in the Liberal Democrat group for your continued support through our supply and confidence agreement because ultimately um, you support us and allow us to form the minority administration which we are, as, as we say to you, we are eternally grateful for. Um, also congratulate Councillor, Councillor Angie Turner on being the new leader of the Liberal Democrat group. Congratulations Angie and we'll enjoy working with you for the next 12 months. Um, this is the final year, Mayor, final municipal year, four of four of our current administration and obviously we'll look forward next year to forming a new one. There are, it's my duty to inform Council of the, of the Deputy Leader and the members of the Cabinet, as I'm required to do. There are a couple of minor tweaks in the, some of the terminology and um, duties within the, um, within the different portfolios as well, which we'll go on to in a second. But basically, I'll continue with the uh, Cabinet responsibilities for strategy and reform. It's my pleasure to reappoint Councillor Nick Titherington as the Deputy Leader and the Cabinet Member responsible for Health and Wellbeing. Um, Councillor Aniela Belinsky gelder as the Cabinet Member for Communities, Social Justice and Wealth Building. Councillor Matthew Tomlinson as the Cabinet Member for Finance, Property and Assets. And finally, last but not least, Councillor James Flannery as the Cabinet Member for Planning, Business Support and Regeneration. At the same point, Mayor, I'm required to um, appoint the uh, or recommend to Council the appointments of the lead members. Youth will now be Councillor Colin Sharples. Social Equality and Justice will be Councillor Jackie Alty. Climate Change will be Councillor Keith Martin. And Mental Health Awareness will be councillor in Watkinson and finally may if I may member champions armed forces will be councillor Derek Forrest and the older people and safeguarding champion will be councillor Jane Bell thank you okay, do we have a seconder uh, are there any questions from other members of the council in which case are we noting this or do we need a vote right that, that that's noted that takes us to item nine on the agenda, which is the appointments to committees, panels and working groups for 2022-23. Um, if I could ask the leader again to propose the motion. Thanks, Mayor. The uh, papers are um, in front of Council as we speak um, for all committees, panels and working groups for the next 12 months. Um, nominations have come forward from the groups and are presented. Thank you. So seconded. Thank you. Again, as we've all submitted our nominations, I'm assuming there aren't any uh, comments or challenges to those. No. no. Sorry, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm slightly perplexed that we have a member who has been put forward as a reserve for committee. That very member has been sanctioned by failed to apologise to when asked to do so, and then went on to sue. I'm just interested to hear what this council uh, feels about that and what message that sends to out to other members and our communities. Thank you. Councillor Foster wishes to respond. Th thanks, um, Councillor Adams. Obviously, um, Councillor Adams is referring to Councillor Barry Yates' nomination as a reserve onto the Standards Committee of this council. Um, as he says, Councillor Yates has been sanctioned by the, San the uh, Sanders Committee, has accused the Chief Executive and the Monitoring Officer of political bias and refuses to re uh, apologise and accept the sanction of the Standards Committee, if you recall, and is actually threatened to, and I don't know if he's actually gone through with um, a compl an official complaint against this council at the uh, unfairness of the Standards um, re regime. So why Councillor um, Walton has put him forward as a reserve for that standards committee. I think council would like to hear from Councillor Walton the justification for that. Um, this council holds high, high standards and it would be interesting to hear from the leader of the Conservative group why she thinks this appointment is appropriate. 
Uh, thank you, Councillor Foster. I think I'll decide whether the council wishes to hear a response. Uh, Councillor Walton, would you like to respond to that? Um, this is news to me, as far as I'm aware, that um, on my list, Councillor Yates isn't um, a substitute on scrutiny. Oh, sorry, standard, sorry. On, on standard. Right, in which case, so could somebody please give me some clarification? Mm -hmm. Right. I'm being told that it is on the list that's been put forward. I apologise, there shouldn't have been, uh, there has been some... In which case, Councillor Walton, would you like to nominate a replacement so we can vote these through? Does it have to be done now? Yeah, it can be, it can be, it can be left. If you would like to feed in, um, I, I'm accepting that this, this has been done in error. So if you would like to feed feed in uh, a replacement name, then we can take it forward from there. Is that, is that okay? Okay, thank you. In which case, can we now um, note those appointments with the amendment that's going to be fed in? Yes. That then takes us to item 11. Sorry. Sorry, I've, I've tripped up already. We need a vote on that. So could you please press your buttons accordingly? Okay, that's that, that's carried. Um, if we can now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is appointments to outside bodies. Again, Councillor Foster, would you like to move those? Point put forward the community hub chairs and vice chairs at the same time. Mayor, that's agenda item 10. Next. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, so the agenda item 10, Mayor, is the appointment of community hub chairs and vice chairs. Um, it's been, it's been, um, these are the nominations from the hubs themselves. They're not the nominations of the cabinet and it's to a point uh, as stated in the, in the pack. Thank you. Is that just a note? Right, we need a vote on that one as well. So again, unless anybody else... Oh, sorry, we've got a seconder. That's that, thank you. We need to go to a vote on that unless anybody has any comments. No, if you could all use your buttons then please. Now it's just something seen on the screen. Oh, it doesn't matter. I can tell you about something. <laughs> 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 so, so, Councillor Turner has gone looking for my glasses and I've actually now got them. They're on the, they're on the table here. So she's, she's, she's not about it. <laughs> But, but anyway, but anyway that's, that, that's carried. <laughs> right, I think we're at item 12. This was, this was going so well. Oh, we're on 11. Right. Appointments to outside bodies. Uh, Councillor Foster. I'll propose as is indicated within the pack. Thank you, Mayor. Second is, yes. Are there, is there any comments from anyone or can we just go to the vote? In which case... Right, again, if you can press your buttons.
Okay, that's carried. Uh, item 12, I think I've caught up now. Uh, council meetings 2022-23. I think those are there to be agreed, unless anybody's got any comments. No. So again, if we can just go to the vote, press your buttons. Just for notes. The note in that one, Right, that's to note, so. Apparently we need some new terminology because note and vote sounds sounds too similar. Indeed. Um, well, that then takes us to item 13, which is the report of the independent remuneration panel. Um, and the leader again. Thanks, uh, Mayor. This is obviously... Um, Something we don't particularly like doing is setting our own um, allowances as councillors. And so what we do is, um, and right, so there's an independent remuneration panel sits approximately four years, looks at the allowances and makes its recommendations. Um, I personally never feel it's appropriate necessarily to go against the recommendations of an independent panel. Um, and I don't intend to do so again tonight. And I'm going to ask council to endorse the proposals that the independent panel has made. However, I do have a concern about one particular item, and that's about this additional special responsibility allowance for the deputy leader of the opposition. And the reason I say that is that that is a political appointment for the Conservative group. And you've got to genuinely ask yourselves what additional special responsibility allowances the deputy leader of the Conservative group have for this council. Over and above, for example, the Vice Chair of Scrutiny, the Vice Chair of Governance, the Vice Chair of Licensing, the Vice Chair of Planning, who all at times carry out that special responsibility for residents in this council and get no special responsibility allowance whatsoever. I, the, the leader of the opposition herself, um, she gets a special responsibility allowance, and rightly so. She's the leader of the opposition. And I am aware it was the leader of the opposition that actually asked the panel to do this. So I would, I would uh, through yourself, if you felt it appropriate, would, would, would like, if council could understand the justification for putting that forward, that might be helpful. But what I would like to do, Mayor, is as well as accept, accepting these recommendations as submitted to us, um, also ask the panel to have a look at this again because I don't necessarily think it is a special responsibility allowance appropriate to this council and justify it to us again, and sorry, look at it again, um, when comparing it to the, the roles and responsibilities, special responsibilities that the vice chairs have on some of our committees that get no additional allowances. Other than that, Mayor, I'm happy to propose the recommendations. Thank you. Right, can I take a second or first of all for the proposal, the recommendations of the panel that have been submitted? Uh, I will. I will second to that. I'll second that. I mean, and I'd like to speak to the the proposal that has been put forward by the leader. I don't know if it's appropriate for me to do that now, or well, <laughs> um, I'm in a bit of a dilemma here because we've had a proposal to accept the recommendations, but you now appear to be putting an amendment <laughs> to refer part of it back. So I'm not sure. No, we're accepting the recommendations, but. Subsequent to that, we wanted to have Right, okay. Right, so would anybody like to speak on the recommendations? Councillor Walton. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I was interviewed and I, I was asked lots of questions, as we all were, by the remuneration panel, and I was quite explicit in what I explained about the role of the at, at, the, at this particular time when we had the same number of members in our group and the role of the opposition le leader, um, deputy leader, is, a, is quite um, a time-consuming role. He assists me um, at the moment, or anybody who was deputy would assist me in carrying out my duties, in researching, in questioning the officers. And I just felt that it was something um, comparable to perhaps a lead member with their how, how much work that they do. And I notice on the report that it says the panel felt that the reasons for explaining 
um, this was that it was a, a comparable with the equivalent role at Chorley and West Lanks. So that, that's what it says on, on, on the report. So, um, as I said, I was asked questions and I felt it was justified that um, the deputy leader of the opposition, with it being, um, as I said, we had both the same number of members in the group that, uh, and they do help me to carry out my duties. And I thought I, my personal opinion was, and I, obviously the, the remuneration panel thought the same, that it was a role that should carry some responsibility. But I do thank the remuneration panel for all their hard work and accept the findings. Right, is there anybody else who wishes to speak on this? In which case we've had Councillor Tithering. Well, I thought you wanted to speak to the Amen. additional proposal. So can we take a vote on the recommendations as have been put, uh, proposed and seconded? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you want to just explain? Yeah, just for clarification, we've had a proposal and a seconder to accept the report of the independent remuneration panel as set out. And that's what we're voting on now. I'm then going to take an additional proposal that will refer the section regarding the uh, deputy leader of the Conservative Party back. Oh, sorry, I do apologise. That will refer the. <laughs> Deputy Leader of the Opposition Party, back to the panel to reconsider. So, at the moment, we're, we're taking a vote on accepting the recommendations as have been put. Councillor Phil Smith. This is it, and, and a proper way forward. We should send the report back and ask them to do some work on it then, and that's what I would recommend. Not take it separately. No point in taking it separately. I think it's very, very churlish, I have to say. Um, and we none of us like voting on these things. Councillor Foster mentioned it before. We don't like voting on it, but it, it's, it, it's a statutory process. We have to go through it. I find it very, very churlish, very, very stupid of Councillor Foster. And I really do think we should vote on the whole thing and send it back if that's the way they feel. Thank you. Right. So, Councillor Green. Councillor Green. No. 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 Councillor Bretherton. Councillor no. Bretherton. No. no. Right. In which case, Councillor Turner. Plus, <laughs> that can we please pe treat people with respect? I don't want to sit in a chamber where I hear another councillor call another councillor stupid. Thank you. <laughs> Right, OK, come on, we need to move on because I'm hungry, even nobody else is. Um, so I've already explained what we're doing. We're now voting on the report of the Independent Remuneration Panel as put as a whole. So if you'd like to vote for or against. Right, that's carried. I now have a second proposal which has been moved by Councillor Foster and seconded by Councillor Titherington that will refer back the item uh, to ask them to look again at um, a special responsibility allowance for the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Councillor Titherington, would you like to speak? Just before you do, Councillor Green. I'm taking on the office of, of Mayor of South Hibble this evening and uh, I wish you and Ange every success for the year, Ed. Can I just challenge the process, uh, though, if you, do, if you don't mind me doing so, on, on your first meeting? Clearly, well, that appears to be an amendment to me. And, and aren't the normal rules of debate that we consider an amendment, first of all, 
vote on that and then if it's if the amendment is accepted it then becomes a substantive motion so if i could just seek some clarification on that point please because i think we've just voted on the report which means of we proceed on to the next item okay you are entitled to challenge it but the ruling of the mayor is final uh, and i'm not accepting the challenge councillor foster made it quite clear that he was moving the uh, whole of the report of the independent remuneration panel but wished for one part of it to be reconsidered so we don't uh, well taking advice uh, it's not an amendment to what was initially proposed it's a second proposal uh, which I'm now going to ask you to vote. Well, I'm not going to ask you to vote on yet because Councillor Titherington is still chomping at the bit and, we, and, and wishes to speak. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Mayor. And uh, may I also congratulate you um, on uh, becoming uh, the Mayor of the Borough and I wish you every success during the year and I look forward to supporting the events that you uh, you, you organise and all that. Um, I, I mean, my my, my comments really are in relation to the rationale and criteria that has been applied by the uh, independent panel um, in determining whether or not the deputy leader of the uh, Conservative group should be given an allowance because I believe that that, that, that particular uh, 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 you know, criteria equally applies to the vice chairs of committees uh, and I, my, my view would be is that if uh, you're going to award uh, an allowance to the deputy leader of the conservative party then that if you're using that criteria that has been that's contained within the report then that using that criteria being applied uh, to, to vice chairs that should also be the case thank you Okay, would anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Foster. Thank you, Mayor. Just a, a slight point of clarity, Mayor, and I think Councillor Titherington did cover this. What we're asking, Mayor, is that the, the panel justify to Council and to Council taxpayers that the, the reasoning behind the additional special responsibilities of the Leader of the Opposition over and above our Vice Chairs of our, of our committees, because it is my view that the vice chairs of the committees have more special responsibilities to this council than the leader of the, op the the deputy leader of the opposition. I also would, you know, you look at the standards committee mayor, you know, five hundred pounds special responsibility allowance. Standards committee chair, unfortunately, is quite busy at times. Yet the, the deputy leader of the opposition, the panel think, is worthy of three times as much. So it's just some clarity there, mayor, and thank you. Uh, Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you, Mayor. Again, I refer to the remuneration panel's findings on page 35. It says, Dear Deputy Leader of the Opposition, during its analysis of the comparative data, the panel noted the lack of an allowance paid to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. The role of the Leader of the Opposition, which would sometimes need to be deputised, was substantial and discussed in depth at the interview with the Opposition Group Leader. They asked me. I didn't bring this forward. The panel noted in its analysis that the deputy leader did not attract an allowance and that this represented an anomaly within the scheme. The panel felt that for the reasons explained above, the anomaly within the scheme should be addressed and therefore recommended that an allowance of £1,500 comparable with equivalent role at Chorley and West Langs be introduced. So it's quite clear what the rationale was in putting this um, opposition group leader's allowance Deputy leaders' allowance forward, so I, I can't see what they're going to say when they when you ask them to review it. Will I be interviewed again, or will it just be you that's interviewed? Councillor Michael Green. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I speak with some hesitation on on this item because I don't like speaking on the findings of an independent independent remuneration panel, and. Way back when, when I was a young and somewhat naive councillor, the first time we ever considered a report from an independent remuneration panel, I refused to vote on it and I abstained because I, I didn't feel it was appropriate for us to, to make a judgment. 
But having said that, that was probably wrong in hindsight because, because the result of that is you would never make any progress whatsoever. We appoint an independent remuneration panel to give their independent view. We had a panel of four individuals, all of which are very experienced in individuals as set out in the report. They've got stacks of experience in their private and, and business lives. And we've all commented, I think I'm right in saying at this council, about how qualified these individuals were to carry out this function on behalf of the council and to form an independent view. In doing so, they have sought evidence from members, they've sought evidence from other councils, from officers and so on, and the wider South Fibble community, and they've come up with their recommendations. If we start to unpick these recommendations, we will end up in a real mess, I would suggest, colleagues. I'm deliberately not commenting on the role of the Deputy Leader of the Opposition because I don't think it's appropriate to do so. But they have made a recommendation that the Deputy Leader of the Opposition receives a small allowance for, for the role which he, he performs and I think we should accept the recommendations on block or otherwise we start to unpick it all. And at this point, you, you've got to question whether individuals will come forward in the future to sit on a, an independent panel. If all the time, as we say, well, we don't quite like recommendation one and we don't like re recommendation five and so on, they will start to say, well, why should I do this? These are volunteers, highly qualified volunteers who have given up their time freely for the good of this council and for the good of our borough. And I think we should accept the recommendations that they have made. The panel will, of course, sit again in the future. And when it sits again in the future, that recommendation on that particular position and indeed other recommendations can be looked at again. But I don't think it will be right to ask them to do so now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. OK, thank you. Councillor Caroline Moon. Thank you, Mayor. I'll keep it brief because Councillor Walton's covered a bit and Councillor Green covered a bit more. I was just going to say, I wonder whether it would be better I'm going to ask you really whether we could withdraw this proposal. It's not a proposal I could support right now because it feels contradictory. I would agree with what you said 100% that we've got this independent panel, they've sat, we should respect that and accept it en masse, which we've done, you, you've all done as well. But then it's contradictory to say, but we want to go back to them immediately and say we want you to look again and justify what you're saying to us when they've clearly given us their justification in that paragraph on page 35, that is their justification. And I think to go back immediately and say that in four years time, raise it, fine, raise it and challenge it. And we can, I might not have a say in that, but people will have a say in that, raise it. But I think it's so contradictory for us as a council to say to these people, we've accepted your report, but we're not happy with this bit. Give us some more justification. To me, that just feels disrespectful. So I wonder if we could withdraw it now and raise it in four years time. Thank you. Councillor Barry Yates. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before I start, could I just congratulate you and your mayoress on this long overdue appointment as Mayor South Ribble? Um, I'm sure everybody has been looking forward to you being Mayor for a long time. Um, when I, when I'm just, just a question, Mr. Mayor. We've already voted on, to, to accept this. Every one of us has voted to accept it. If we vote, if we vote again to go uh, to reject part of it, then it's quite silly because we've already, as a as a full council, stood pressed with buttons to vote in favour of this recommendation. So really, the amendment, or you overruled, sorry, Mr. Mayor, you overruled it as an amendment, uh, but there is no. Uh, vote to come in the, in the them circumstances because we've already voted. Okay, thank you. Councillor Matt Trafford. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've been a lead member and I've been a um, vice chair as well of our hub. This seems to be getting a little bit like much ado about nothing. Um, Councillor Yates has, has rightly said that we've already voted to accept the original um, report and, and recommendations. All this seems to me is a point of query. What we're, vote, what we're voting on here is saying that if the uh, independent panel have decided that um, the deputy leader of the Conservative group does uh, 
you say potato, I say potato. Um, if 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 they're agreeing that the that the leader, we're getting a little bit pedantic, and that's why much of it about nothing was mentioned. Um, if if we're saying that that was justified, fair enough. All we're asking is to check that there's not a double standard when it comes to vice chairs of hubs and committees. That's all we're asking. It's a point of query. It isn't a point of rejecting anything at all. It's a point of query, and that's all that that this, this is. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. I don't have anybody else indicating that they wish to speak. Could I just ask for some clarification from the mover of the motion? If we do decide to ask them to look at this again and they come back and say, no, that's what we recommend, are you happy with that? Absolutely, Mayor. It's the, it's the panel. And what I need to point out here, I, I was interviewed by the panel. At no point did they ask my view, for example, about the remuneration of vice chairs or the remuneration of the deputy leader of the opposition. And I know it's still impact for another four or five years, the Conservative group, because this, this is where that allowance will be going, clearly. But the, you know, the, they didn't speak to me about it, Mayor, because if they did speak to me about it, I'd have had some views on it, because it's, my angst isn't with the allowance going to the opposition deputy leader. My angst is I think that the <coughs> vice chairs are being undervalued and there is an absolute direct direct correlation here. So whatever they come back with, Mayor, of course we'll accept. Right, it does occur to me that the proposal might have been better if it was to refer uh, uh, refer both vice chairs and the leader, uh, the deputy leader of the opposition back to the panel, is that? Right, if that is what you are proposing, then we're asking them to look at those aspects again. Um, Councillor Moon. It's only a quick one, Mr Mayor. I just think for when this goes back, however it goes back, I won't be supporting this. I think it's so disrespectful. I wanted to make sure it goes back, knowing that this was definitely not a unanimous position of this council. And I think for future learning, it would have been much better, I feel, to have pulled this before and gone back and had these conversations with the panel if you're not happy that they didn't ask you this question or that yeah. question because we're now in a position as a council all of us where with this panel who i think is made up of you know people who've given time and and we're going back to i just think it's back to front with respect leader i think it would have been nicer to have pulled it had the conversation before deferred it whatever but not say we're accepting it and then immediately challenge it and I don't want them to think that that was a unanimous position, Mr. Mayor. It's not. Okay. Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I'm sure the. Uh, um, it's embarrassing for all of us this, to be quite honest. So when, I, when I said stupid, I wasn't referring to Council Foster stupid. I, I, no, no, it, would, it was just the proposal I thought was just absolutely um, just. Uh, sorry, yeah, can you fine. come through the chair, please? We're having yeah, a discussion across I'm, the chamber. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just wondering whether, when, when, it, and if it goes back, and we're all going to vote on it, and. I think we should just accept it, but you no, know, fifteen hundred quid, fifteen hundred quid. Is it going to break the bank? No, it's not going to. Is it going to do any harm to me? I'm sorry, it won't. But yeah, you'll, yeah in principle, we, we should be accepting what's put forward. We've already decided that, um, and I just sort of look at the comparisons. Really, um, deputy. Uh, leader of the opposition at Chorley, £2,081. Deputy leader of Westerlanx, £1,694. Um, we could all say that the councillors are getting paid too much. If you look at some of the comparisons, we are getting a bit, a bit overpaid. There's all sorts of things that you could query in that. And why? Why appoint an independent panel of <laughs> who know what they're talking about, know what they're doing, have looked into it in great detail and come back with a recommendation? Um, I just find it. OK, I really do want to move this along now. We've heard compelling arguments on both sides. I'm going to take Councillor Green, Councillor Turner and then Councillor Foster. And I would like to then go to a vote. So Councillor Michael Green. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I won't talk about the, the issue itself because I've made my position clear. Uh, it's a point about the procedure, though, if, if I may. So you've accepted an, an additional motion, but we've not seen that motion in, in writing. Uh, and we've already had Councillor Foster who's made a proposal and then has shifted that proposal during the debate onto something completely different. We, with respect, could we have the motion in writing, please, which I think would be required under under the uh, 
constitution of the council and then we know exactly what we are voting for whether we're voting for against or abstaining and it would appear that there's going to be a split vote so my understanding under the standing orders is that would be recorded in the minutes who voted for and who voted against but if, you, if i could just seek clarity on that please thank you mr mayor Right, Councillor Foster, could you please write out your proposal and pass it to the officers? And in the meantime, uh, Councillor Turner, would you like to speak? Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. The um, Deputy Leader Minority Group, is that what the supply and demand, not supply and demand, What's it, what is it? Can't hear. Well, anyway, whatever it is, um, is that is that uh, is that your? It's me. Is it me? Because Sorry, I think you're wishing to clarify what's actually being recommended. Within the recommendations, there is uh, a figure for the deputy leader of the opposition group, and there is a figure for the leader of the minority group in a confidence and supply arrangement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I'm not concerned for myself for any financial benefit. I was just checking that the remuneration panel had recognised that sometimes there isn't a distinctive um, uh, two parties here. Obviously, the, the, there's uh, there's the sort of coalition in inverted commas. So thank you. It has recognised that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Can I, I can assure you there is no coalition before you feed that to the Conservative group. <laughs> and Councillor Foster, have you managed to finish writing yet? I'm saving all my best jokes for Friday, so I'm not about to en entertain you at this point. Um, well, both of them. If you, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, if you could just scribble a bit faster. Right, I have the proposal in writing. And could you get Councillor Titterington to sign it as well, please? I'm only just ready. Right, we now have a written proposal from Councillor Foster, seconded by Councillor Titherington, that Council requests the independent panel reviews and further comments on the rationale for the Deputy Leader of the Opposition receiving a special responsibility allowance, yet Vice Chairs of Statutory Committees do not. Everybody happy with that? That's now in writing, the officers have it. And unless anybody else wishes to speak, and I hope you don't, can we now move to the vote? In which case, use your buttons, please. Right, if all those who wish to vote have voted, um, that's carried by 24 votes to 19. <laughs> And I take it that is a recorded vote in the minutes. Yes, it is. Right, that takes us on to the final item before we go into closed session. Shall we do so? And if I could call on the leader to, to introduce the ledger investment in South... Oh, sorry, is it... Councillor Titherington. I will call on Councillor Titherington to introduce a leisure investment in South Ribble leisure centres. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I mean, um, and uh, welcome to the baptism of fire. I only came here for a bit of a jollification. But uh, 
Uh, uh, but um, I'll, I'll be brief with this with, with this uh, report because I mean uh, members will know that at the at the previous meeting I did indeed uh, give an extended report um, uh, on uh, what our, our, our strategy going forward in terms of the uh, leisure centres and the investments. And uh, at the previous meeting, Council did, did agree uh, to uh, re reallocate uh, £775,000 uh, to uh, ensure that the work that was needed to be carried out um, to align with the, the work that was being carried out with the decarbonisation uh, could go ahead. Uh, and among those recommendations uh, to Council um, was a note uh, that a further report uh, would be brought forward to this Council um, out, 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 outlining the uh, investments that we would be uh, making uh, to uh, revamp the, uh, the existing leisure centres. Um, and uh, and this, this report really fulfils uh, that commitment. Uh, that was that, that recommendation that was accepted. Uh, so what we're asking in this report is to uh, is, is to uh, commit uh, and, and approve uh, the reallocation of uh, 5.8 million uh, from the 19 million capital budget originally set aside uh, for the new leisure centre. The overall proposed programme is contained uh, with, within the report, uh, and it's uh, and it will be well. Members will know that that will be developed uh, going going forward. Uh, with regard to the procurement, uh, we will bring uh, a, a detailed report to cabinet in, in June, um, uh, and the, that strategy will be allowed then, so that we can deliver uh, this this works. Uh, the work is planned to be completed in September 2023 uh, and, as I've said previously, will transfer, transform uh, our leisure centres into uh, a updated, exciting uh, and user-friendly uh, facilities, uh, which our communities will do expect and uh, deserve. So, um, uh, Council approved uh, the uh, report last last year and uh, uh, last week uh, last meeting and I would just uh, I commend this report to council uh, and seek the support of council thank you okay thank you is that seconded um, and I reserve the uh, right to speak later on if I may thank you rather hoping we're not going to have a later on but um would anybody else wish to speak to this councillor Molyneux Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for all residents of South Ribble, um, I'd like to make it quite clear that the Conservatives never said that we would close any leisure centres at all. It was never said we would close any leisure centres, as I've just said, but we were looking at building a new leisure centre and reviewing all the others that we have. And as a, res a responsible administration, you'd have expected us to do just that. And I'm sure it suits the uh, Labour group to let the public think that the Conservatives were going to close down leisure centres in South Ribble, which is un completely untrue. And let's also not forget that five to six million pounds has been put towards this project from our government, a Conservative government. Without it, it probably wouldn't be happening. Residents of South Ribble have been shortchanged on leisure compared to what the Conservatives were going to do, <coughs> had to offer. The Conservatives were proposing to build a, new, a brand new, all singing, all dancing, state of the art leisure centre and a review of the other leisure centres were going to take place. And this proposal, to me, is just an upgrade, when really the people of South Ribble should be getting a lot more. Thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor Matthew Tomlinson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I couldn't quite enjoy this. As the finance portfolio hall, holder, sorry, we have been worried, and I know we all have, about the rising cost of a potential new leisure centre. 
Indeed, in the recent local by-election, a leaflet from the Conservative group bemoaned the fact that we were going to end up in debt because we were borrowing money to build a state-of-the-art leisure centre. Now, you can't have it both ways. You can either support the building of a new leisure centre, which, remember, you said was going to cost £15 million. We found out within about four weeks of taking over that some of you knew that wasn't true. It was at least going to be £25 million. And now with inflation and the world as it is now, it could be anything up to £40 million to build a new leisure centre. Derby City Council are building a new leisure centre. It's going to cost them £40 million. Now, you can't say we should carry on building, otherwise you're shortchanging the residents on one hand, and on the other hand saying, oh, you shouldn't be spending money to invest in our communities because that means the council will have debts. So you need to decide which side of that coin you're going to sit on. I do want to refer, though, because I looked it up today, I found it and I was really pleased to find it, the interview that the then cabinet member um, for regeneration, planning, leisure, whatever the title was, was Councillor Phil Smith was interviewed, I'm presuming it's in his conservatory at home, because there's film of it, by Radio Lancashire, and I've written down exactly what he said, and I'm happy to share the clip, because it's on the internet, with every single member of this council. His vision, his vision for leisure in South River was to build a new facility to replace, not to supplement, the word he used was to replace the three older, weary, inefficient centres that we have at the moment. Was a vote ever taken? No. Was that the view of the cabinet member? Yes. That was the view of the Conservative cabinet member, to build one new leisure centre to replace. That's the word he used. That's the word he used. Anyone who wants to Google Councillor Phil Smith, South Ribble, Radio Lancashire, it pops up. It's not a difficult one to find, uh, actually. Um, so let's not have it any other way. The vision of the cabinet member was to close the three local leisure centres we have and open a new one. It may well be that at the time he thought that was the best way forward. You know, I'm not one of those councillors who says everything you think is wrong. That may well have been what he thought. The opportunity has arisen to save all three local leisure centres that we know each of those three communities across our borough value very much. Even if, you know, even if we were building a brand new state-of-the-art leisure centre and having to close the other three or modify them significantly, which let's have, admit would be a downgrade of each of them, the local residents in the Leyland area, in the Penwitham area, in the Bamber Bridge and Watley Dale area would have been hugely disappointed. This is a good news story for our council and a good news story for our residents. And if you want to paint it in a different way, shame on you, the residents will know exactly what you're doing and they'll remember next May. Thank you. Before I call on Councillor Caleb Tomlinson, could I please remind Council that we are debating the report of the Director of Communities. We're not fighting an election yet. Um, so, Councillor Caleb Tomlinson. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor, and welcome to your position. I hope you have a very enjoyable 12 months. I'll do my best to make sure you don't. <laughs> in all fairness, it's not started very well. But... <laughs> well, I'm, I, I'm not going to be drawn into any negativity because I don't want to. Negativity causes stress, makes people ill, and I'm not going to be drawn on these he said, he said arguments. What I'm doing, I'm standing to ask the portfolio holder if we, South Wibble Borough Council, could follow the lead of Ellesmere Council and Shropshire Council and install stormer bag changing facilities in South Ribble's leisure centres. Not only would this help people, not only would this help people who are recovering from bowel or bladder cancer, it would also vastly help sufferers of Crohn's and colitis disease. 
These people are embarrassed. They don't want to go into changing areas that are open to the public. They want privacy once they've had the swim and they've exercised. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I'm sure that will be taken away and looked at. Um, Councillor Barry Yates. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm completely in favour of the investments in, in oil ledger centres, and I've said so for many years. Like you, Mr. Mayor, I produce a newsletter that goes out and lets all our residents know what's going on. In 2018, this newsletter went out to 13,000 people uh, within the eastern area. Um, all, most of them, well, not most of them, maybe about 20 of them watched the council meeting, last, the last council meeting, where the leader got up and, like Pinocchio, uh, sent comments across that, uh, were, that wasn't absolutely Sorry, correct. Sorry, Councillor Yates, it's not appropriate to infer that the leader um, is like Pinocchio and therefore presumably is lying. Apologise to you, Councillor Poster, for that comment. But for telling untruths to the to the members of the public... Sorry, Councillor Yates, it's not whether it's Pinocchio or telling untruths, you know. All right. But the council... ...put in press that the Conservative group was against um, supporting leisure centres was completely misleading. <laughs> Um, misleading in a way that uh, went out in, in different areas, on different brochures, saying different things. Like you, Mr. Mayor, when I put a brochure out, we tell the truth. It's here. It's here to say it all along. You know, for somebody like, uh, and I can see the chief exec laughing, because he's in the pocket, same pockets as uh, oh, the oh, other oh, way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, Councillor Yates, I will suggest that you Councillor Yates, I will suggest that you apologize immediately or I will eject you from the meeting. Not accepted. No. In which case, can you now please sit down? Can you now no, can you now please sit down? I think we've had enough. Um Councillor Will Adams. I'm not sure how I can follow that, to be honest, Mr Mayor, but um, come get back to some bit of order anyway. I just want to commend this administration for this policy. This is something which is really positive. The people of Penwitham and Bamber Bridge having a, a new facility in Leyland, you know, that they can't get access to is means absolutely nothing to them. And closing their facility would have a huge impact on them, on their health, on their well-being. I think we should also commend um, this administration for, for looking at the costing of accessing also those leisure centres while also investing in them and making them better for the communities. We've done that while also treating the staff and putting the staff on better terms and conditions. This is a real huge positive for the people of South Ribble. I think this administration should be commended for that. Thank you. Councillor Margaret Smith. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And may I congratulate you and your mayoress. I hope you have a wonderful year. Uh, to get back to item 14, um, I've read the schedule for uh, the leisure centres um, and I just would like some clarification, please. Um, I have been informed that there is a possibility that the um, swimming pools will be retiled uh, with the refurbishment of the pool side. Is this correct? If you wouldn't mind, yeah, if you can quickly clarify that. So the pool are going to be retiled. That's fine. Could you tell me, please, has there been, I think it's called, an integrity um, investigation done as to the state of the pools that are going to be retiled? 
Uh, and if so, what is the what is the um, status of it? And also, please, could you also tell me um, if they are going to be retiled, how long it will take to retile them, um, how long it will take to cure them after they've been retiled, and how long do you anticipate them to be closed? Thank you. You'd like to come back? Right, Councillor Titherington will answer those questions when he sums up and responds to the debate. Okay, uh, Councillor Michael Green. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I will be supporting this report uh, on the recommendations that are contained in it because it's really pleasing uh, to see investment going into the leisure centres um, across South Ribble. Uh, so I will be supporting it for that reason. But I have to say that this is disappointing con compared to what we could have had uh, because we could have had all singing, all dancing, new leisure centre. And as a result, there would have been more money left to actually invest in the other centres as well. So they would have been better as well. So we've shortchanged the residents of South Ibble. But I want to pick up on the point that Councillor Tom Winston said, because he, he quotes an interview that Councillor Smith is, is alleged to have done with Radio Lancashire. That may or may... That's fine, thank you. That may or may not have been the case. And I'll take you on first value, Councillor Tom Winston. That, that is what Councillor Smith may have said at that time. But... As a council, we don't make up policies by talking to any radio station, even the the esteemed, um, the esteemed Radio Lancashire. We make policy in this council chamber. We make policy at cabinet meetings as well. And if you look at the minutes of the cabinet meetings and the minutes of the council meeting, every single member of this conservative group, and I think every single member of the council actually, voted for a new leisure centre to be built and did not vote to close a single leisure centre in South Ribble. So that is the record and that is the record that we stand on. And Councillor Smith, and, and who was a prominent member of the, of the Cabinet, had he want, wanted that vision of closing leisure centres, which he referred to in an interview, I'm sure he would have persuaded colleagues within the group. But at no point was that ever discussed within the Conservative group, never mind voted on. I reiterate, every single member of the then Conservative group voted for a new leisure centre and did not vote to cause a single leisure centre anywhere in South Ribble. And any other comments which, which are made by anyone else in this chamber or outside this chamber are simply disingenuous. And we will be desisted, resisted fully, Councillor Foster, because that, that is not the case whatsoever. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Alan Ogilvy. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and congratulations to you and to Councillor Turner. Um, I'd like to um, address the report in front of us, and in particular, Recommendation 5 regarding the approach to procurement. I understand that the rationale that this administration has taken on page 76 to award separate contracts for each of the centres, um, as I say, I've worked in project management, I can understand the rationale that's given there, but that does not tell the whole story. If this council is truly going to demonstrate to the residents of this borough that what is being invested in leisure provides value for money, then you also need to go out to a large contractor asking them to quote for all centres so that that price can be compared against the individual um, centre quotes that you'll get from different contractors. So I'd like to see you doing that. Um, if ultimately it goes down to separate contracts, can you give us assurances that this council currently has sufficient project management resource to meet that demand? Thank you. Councillor Paul Foster. Mayor, if you may, Mayor, I would like I would request to indulge me slightly as on the point of order before I speak on the um, the paper, if I may, please. Um, the conduct of a member in this um, chamber and his reference to our statutory officer, because I, I, in all my time as an elected councillor, never heard, Mayor, such an absolute disgraceful comment as was made, and I won't repeat it. I'm stuck for words, Mayor. I am genuinely stuck for words. 
I would like officially, Mayor, to note that I make an official complaint to the monitoring officer about the conduct of said member, Councillor Barry Yates, and if it was down to me, I'd put a proposal to this council to remove him immediately from this chamber. And you may still laugh, Councillor Yates, I think your comments were appalling at best. And I, I do not stand for any type of conduct like that. Mayor, the, um, I'm, quite, I'm quite taken aback, Mayor, to be honest with you. And I just hope the Conservative group do something about it for once. The, um, there's many comments being made regarding the leisure centres and the closing, and clearly Councillor Green is exceptionally sensitive about the comments that Councillor Phil Smith made. I urge all members to listen, to listen to the link. It's what Councillor Phil Smith says. Also, members are also aware that the Cabinet in 2019, the Conservative Cabinet, pulled that paper in the January from Council with the escalating costs, but still allowed at that time a further £600,000 of our taxpayers' money to be spent on works next door on a scheme that the new colleagues was unaffordable. We all know, as we're studying here, Mayor, it was Conservative policy. Councillor Phil Smith said it live to close down the leisure centres. You may not like it now because you now realise it is a desperately unpopular decision that you are pushing forward with. A desperately unpopular decision. You're all getting very twitchy now, aren't you? Because an 11% increase in the vote in Earnshaw Bridge says one thing. Therefore, we will continue to challenge you on your policy to close down every leisure centre in this borough for the new super centre that Councillor Phil Smith was looking to build. In respect to the project management, Councillor Ogilvy, and the procurement, there is a de and, uh, and Councillor Titherington will go through this in a second, no doubt. There is a detailed um, procurement strategy paper coming to the June Cabinet, and I'm sure we can discuss it there as well. Thank you. Councillor Caroline Moon. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I want to ask the Cabinet member a question, but before I do, I just want to say, and I'll take this at whatever cost it is to me, I want to distance myself from the comments that have been made in here because it boils me. It absolutely boils me. We, I just think my view of politics is through the floor. The public's view of politics is through the floor. And then I sit here tonight, you come straight from work, you come in to do your duty, and I apologise, Mr Merck, because I'm slightly off track, I'll be dead quick, but you come to do your duty and you listen to this, and I just think, I could pack my bags and leave, never mind anyone else. So, Mr Merck, I just want it clearly stated that I distance myself from those comments. It's disgraceful, and I'll take my consequences. My question to the Cabinet member is, in this paper, the legislature talks about one week closure of the leisure centres you're hoping to do the refurbs within the week and I get it with the direct debit thing but I guess I just wanted to ask it feels a lot when you read the spec it feels a lot to achieve in a week and and I understand not wanting to trigger a huge administrative piece of work for the memberships but I just wouldn't want to see us rush to do you're trying to squeeze something in and and it maybe not go as well as it could because we don't want to incur that additional cost so i, I could just a reassurance that that week is flexible if it needs to be okay thank you councillor keith martin uh thank you mr mayor and congratulations to you and 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 and, and uh it's well deserved um uh, i'm Mine's going to be quite boring, I think, what you were saying now. Um, I, I was a bit sort of concerned about the, the way that the Conservative government gave us the money. Uh, we didn't, you know, we had to bid for it. We had to fight for it. It was last minute. Our officers worked damn hard, excuse my French, to get that. It wasn't a given gift. Um, we had to work for it and we had to wait for it. And we were lucky we got it. It wasn't a case of just someone giving it us because because of other um, uh, favours perhaps or anything like that that was in incurred here. Um, the, le the leisure centres uh, are going to be a good thing for people's health, mental health, uh, as we've alluded to already um, by, by my esteemed colleague, councillor Caleb Tomlinson, um, with regard to people's health. Um, there's environmental impact with this as well, and that will have a positive effect on our carbon 
reduction, uh, which is what we need to do all the time. We seem to forget that bit because it's the same as building playgrounds. You think it's just building playgrounds. It isn't. It gets people out of the houses. It turns their laptops off. It turns off. There's so many things. It, it creates decent mental health, stops people from going in hospital. So I, I support the... Um, what we're doing at the moment as an administration. I think I think we need, we've been a bit disingenuous with the reasons why we're doing it against the political reason why you think you should we should not be doing it by others. Thank you. Okay, I have one more member who wishes to speak, which is Councillor Phil Smith, and I'm going to invite Councillor Titherington to sum up. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, we've heard, heard so much over uh, the last few years about what has been said and what hasn't been said. Uh, and my vision for leisure was going back to 2008, 2009, whatever it was, uh, a vision for leisure. T to change leisure in this borough for the better, to bring it into the 21st century. And that's what was happening throughout the, uh, this country at the time. Um, and I supported that, absolutely no doubt about that. Um, but those visions over a period of time change, different opportunities present themselves. And when opportunities present themselves, those are the opportunities that you take. Uh, that opportunity at that time, um, I thought was a good opportunity. Um, but as I say, things change. And I, I refer members to um, the scrutiny calling. Read that paper. Doesn't say anything about closing leisure centres there because that's when things changed. Things had changed a long time before. And I, and I draw your attention to uh, a paper, and we've all been waving papers out South Ribble Campus Programme, high level business case. Went to Cabinet in uh, 2017 in December 2017 uh, and went to council in 2018. And on the, the, the back of that, the, the note for the proposal of the health and wellbeing campus, and I say health and wellbeing campus, it wasn't just the hardware of uh, a leisure centre. It was also the software of the green links, the play parks, the open spaces. It was a full programme of, of and anybody that wants to read that should read it because it's a, a, a substantial document. And I read you the, a, a minute of the meeting uh, of that council, the cabinet meeting that went to council. The cabinet emphasised that the council had no intentions of closing leisure centres in the borough. Discussions were ongoing with the Home and Communities Agency, the HCA, regarding the, the site relating to Heather Lee, which was made available because of the provision of the Section 106 money. Those discussions were positive. At present, this is a principle uh, of was approved by officers. So, that's what changed in, in that, that was lost. Um, but we still had the opportunity of building next door. At the time, we looked at various leisure centres. Crew got one, 15 million. Warrington got one, 15 million. Oldham got one, 15 million. And at the same time, Blackburn with Darwin got one at the same time that we were looking at ours. Uh, so that leisure centre could, could have been built for that price at that time with the support of Sport England yeah, with the support of Sport England, and that could have been delivered and was due to have been opened any second now. Um, and there's no reason that couldn't have happened at that price, at that cost. I know Councillor Foster refer refers to a paper um, that really wasn't a paper in, in the sense that um, the Cabinet disagreed with that paper. And the, the evidence of that disagreement goes back to a Council meeting um, in 2019, in February 2019, with a programme that was put forward by the by the Conservative uh, group uh, for that council, and we were referring to the work that was done at that time. And this suggests in there that a, a, a leisure centre could be built for 40, for 15 million pounds. 
It does also refers to uh, playing pitch hubs at four and a half billion pounds, but it's twice as big as the one that's being delivered at Bamber Bridge. So it refers to an awful lot. So there's all sorts of things happened since the early days of people having ideas and bringing ideas forward to cabinet and cabinet discussions and what what comes forward to council. And it is this council that make these decisions and it is this council that made those decisions. The council supported that, that programme. The council supported that and the council supported that. And I'm hoping today that uh, what is before us today um, will go through without, with full support, because we all agree with it. There are uh, there are no options on other options on the table. Um, the land that was available, we've made it quite clear that is not available, um, and there's no other land available to build. So, and with help, as we say, of the Conservative government, giving us five million pounds for decarbonisation, which I have to say is a good thing, and the money that this council is going to put towards it um, goes some way to achieving what we were hoping to achieve. It doesn't go all the way by a long way, but it goes some of the way. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. I gave you I gave you an extra thirty seconds that then you should have had then. So if I can call on Councillor Titherington to, to sum up and then we'll go to the vote, because it would appear that we're all in favour of this anyway. So. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm going to uh, answer uh, those what I think were genuine contributions and the questions that were asked. Uh, and uh, the first one that I mean, uh, I'm grateful to uh, Councillor Caleb Tomlinson for raising the issue that he did in relation to, uh, you know, changing um, changing rooms to uh, account for all kinds of abilities and uh, disabilities. Uh, and I can assure him that in any of the work that is being carried out, uh, that that will be full consideration. We will involve. Uh, the lead member for uh, diversity and equality because the fundamental principle of all of this that we've talked about in leisure is to give access to people of all abilities all abilities now that's that's really what it's all about i mean and i'm really sort of well, I'll, I'll, co I'll, come on, I'll come on to that. I mean, if in relation to the question that uh, Councillor Margaret uh, Smith made about, about the tiles and the other technical questions, I have to say I, I will have to respond to that or get somebody else to respond to it uh, following uh, this, this uh, meeting. Okay. Um, Councillor Ogilvy, I mean, yeah, I, he raised the issue about procurement, and uh, I mean, I know that he's uh, he's got experience in that. There will be a full report coming to uh, cabinet, which is contained within the report uh, in in June, and uh, no doubt, I mean, you'll be able to sort of comment further on there. But we will be taking everything in, in into account. I mean, I think he would agree that the that when we're talking about procurement. The fundamental has to be to get the work done uh, with proper value for money, but that with that is, is done efficiently, because we have put a deadline on this uh, of uh, September 2023, uh, and uh, we 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 want to, we want to meet that. Uh, in relation to uh, uh, Councillor uh, Moon, uh, uh, I'm grateful for her, for her comments. I mean, I think you know that's a genuine question, and I. Uh, I agree with you, is that if there is going to be any closure, we want to keep them to the absolute minimum. But that not sh that should not be at the sacrifice of the work that's being carried out, because if we're getting shoddy work done because we're rushing it, then we will pay a bigger price uh, as, as, it, as it goes on. Um, so, I mean, I think they are the, uh, the, the genuine questions that were asked because to be honest with you, listen to the debate, I forgot what the report was about. I did, I mean, I've listened to the uh, case for the defense, uh, you know, from, Cap from Councillor Smith, who seems to be, every time we have a debate, he seems to be, have to go and recount every explanation for every action that he took in, uh, in, in when he was, uh, he was, he was on the cabinet. But I think I said in my last report is that I mean, I'm fed up, really fed up with would have, could have, should have. 
because with all the promises, and he 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 he, he speaks about um, uh, about we could have got this for fifteen million, we could have got that for fifteen million. Well, why the bloody hell didn't we? <laughs> why why did why didn't we? Why was it left to us? Why was it left to us to come in here and start? And you look at the actions that we've taken on leisure in the last three years, not only on leisure, but on other things. In the last three years, it's it's more than what the Conservative group did when they were in power for the previous 12 years. So I'm not taking any lessons. No, I'm not. I'm not taking any lessons from that group on about actions and about doing things and getting things done. I mean, because all your all all the debate that you've tried to shift to here now has been on the on the fact that you that you uh, you could have done this and we should have been getting more. Okay, if we should be getting more, or you come and tell us where we can get more. Because if you think that we can build a new centre now for fifteen million quid, we couldn't do it when you were in power, and we couldn't do it now. What we're doing now, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm having to recount all the, all the, all the uh, report that I put forward at the, at, at the, at the last meeting. But I want to say this: I want to say this is that I'm not taking any lessons from a conservative group about integrity, honesty. Uh, and uh, and and being open with with the public, I'm fed up with the bloody lies that are being told in this in this borough and in this country. Sorry, I mean, sorry, Councillor Titherington, I've stopped Councillor Yates from inferring that people are lying, and I'm now stopping you from doing the same. Could you please res respond to the report, and perhaps an apology might be due for what you just inferred make any uh, direct accu accusations as councillor yates did what i said is that i'm fed up i'm fed up with the lies i'm fed up with the lies so councillor titherington you cannot infer that people have been lying and you're sick of them um you know we, we, we need to have a standard of debate in in this council and so far this evening can i hand this thing back uh, because the way it's going um <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the next 12 months. So please, please, can I just ask every member to show some respect? You may well have personal feelings about what other people have or haven't said and, and the substance of it. But please refrain from, from inferring that members on either side of the council are somehow lying or, or being untruthful. And let's show some respect to each other. Because please, for the next 12 months, I don't want to be going through what I've been through tonight. So... Have you anything more to say, or can we go to the vote? Uh, well, I, I, well, thank you, and I, I apologise if I've offended anybody. But I mean, I do uh, tend to uh, state the truth, and I will continue to to do that. But okay, but Mr. Mayor, the the fact of the matter is, is that I, I, this debate has really gone away from the report that is before us. So I'm going to bring it back to that report and say. Is that this is? I mean, the proposals in here do are a exciting and ambitious um, uh, program for uh, for the people and the residents of South Ribble. It will provide, as I've said previously, a state of the art uh, leisure centres in the communities in which they seek to serve. It, uh, they they will provide those facilities that I thought that we all agreed with. Uh, when I reported it at the uh, last council meeting. So this report is, uh, is to set, set forward. It explains what uh, work is going to be done to bring our leisure centres up to date uh, so that our communities can enjoy them. And I commend it to council. Thank you. Right. I'm now going to move to the vote. So if you can bump your buttons in front of you for or against or abstain, and we can then move on, hopefully. Right, that's carried unanimously by those that are still here and voting. Um, I am advised that item 16 contains confidential um, information 
that is commercially sensitive. So could I have a proposal to exclude the press and public? Yes, sorry, Mayor. Uh, is that seconded? Yeah. Seconded. Thank you. Uh, are we all in favour? I'm not going to ask you to vote. Um, in which case, can we now 